Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company for part two of our Tesla Model 3 battery pack discovery. What we have here is a Model 3 battery pack that we have taken the lid off of and it was a collision damaged pack that um, had a blown pyrofuse. That's how we could tell it was a collision damaged uh, donor pack. There is a detonation device inside the pyrofuses that opens up the fuse and basically splits the modules into 200 volts each versus 400 volts. So this pack is currently being charged and one of the reasons we do that is to determine if there was any cell damage or any module damage and uh, we currently have the two middle modules jumpered. They're 400 volts on the outside edges here um, and we're charging currently, we have it up to 389.3 volts at the terminals there. One of the things we find with Tesla is they have a lot of fun, it appears. And um, there are actually a couple of symbols on this particular Model 3 board on the battery management system board. And uh, there is a Batman and Robin symbol on these boards. The Batman and Robin reference on the circuit board inside the Model 3 battery pack is not the first instance of this kind of whimsical fun that uh, Tesla uh, is having with circuit boards. This, for example, is a power electronics module and there's a board inside here that actually has a reference to the board being made here on Earth by humans, which of course became increasingly more important as the Roadster was uh, sent into outer space. So it's conceivable that uh, alien life forms stumbling on this roadster at some point in the future will uh, know exactly where that roadster came from. So as we've been charging this pack to gauge its uh, usefulness in a car, we're finding that one brick is actually lower than the rest of the bricks in this pack. There are 4,416 21700 lithium ion cells in this entire pack. We're finding that one of the bricks, which is a collection of parallel connected 21700 cells, actually has a slightly lower voltage than the rest, which is usually indicative of a parasitic or resistive dying cell. So the next thing we're going to do once we have this charged up we're going to begin to isolate which cell is affecting that one brick. The charging method that we're using is a fairly hefty power supply. We have it connected to three phase AC, a 70 amp circuit. And this power supply is actually capable of delivering 500 volts DC at up to 30 amps. We're currently fin uh, feeding in almost 10 amps because we don't have thermal management, we can't go any higher than that. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. And uh, again, if you're interested in Tesla tech, this is the place to hang out. Thank you.